Welcome to the podcast with the best intro music in the industry. You can only find it here, folks. Uh, I'm your host, Sydney Myers. This is the Standout Job Seeker podcast presented by JobScan. In this episode, we are interviewing a successful job seeker. It's Pris- Priscilla Joe, who is our social media specialist here at JobScan, actually. Now, Priscilla's story is really interesting. Um, this is a reason why I wanted to share it with y'all. She started her career in fashion and she made a career change into marketing, which is very different. And so I know there's a lot of people out there who are contemplating a career change or who are trying to make a career change. And so this interview um, is going to have a lot of nuggets that you can use. um, And you might be able to relate to it a lot too with some of the emotions that she was feeling or some of the like weird things that she went through. Um, But you'll also get some tips on going through, you know, writing a resume for a career change or going through the interview process and dealing with rejection. So there's a lot of nuggets in here. Uh, Make sure you listen to the end so you don't miss anything. Uh, If you're enjoying this episode, leave a review wherever you're listening on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, anywhere else. If there's something that you want us to cover in this podcast, or if you have a question that you want us to talk about in an episode, leave it in your review on Apple Podcasts. You can leave a text review. So share your notes on what you think of the show, but also leave any thoughts there on questions or topics that you want us to cover. Thank you so much for listening. We're going to start this interview right at the beginning. Um, I find that's the best place to start. So we're going to start with Priscilla's experience coming out of high school being 18 years old and having to make that decision, what am I going to do with my life? Let's hear her story. Coming out of high school, I had absolutely no idea what I wanted to do or what kind of career I wanted to take on in my life. I think that's the hardest thing coming out of high school and being so young is that no one really guides you to, you know, on your life. It's kind of like something that you have to choose on your own. And so I went off and based my major off of something that I thought I liked, which is fashion. I've always liked the idea of just being able to express yourself through fashion and, you know, show your personality and feel confident through what you wear. So I thought, hey, if I like this, I can go in to school and study it and get a job out of it. You know, they always tell you do what you like. So that's what I did. And I went off to college to study textiles at a university that was close to my home. They have a really great textile program. So I was lucky enough to be able to stay close to home, but then also study something that I was interested in. And in college, the textile courses, it was Not what I really pictured when someone talked about fashion. I think like as a kid, when someone mentions fashion, you think about being a fashion designer, you think about being a buyer and buying assortments and going to show like warehouse shows. And it was completely different because we did a lot of study on the science behind textiles. So like fiber, finishes, weaving, coloring, dyeing, all that fun stuff. Ultimately you know, after going through all the courses, I ended up landing my first internship through a career fair at my school. And it was with the company that recruited really heavily at my school. This internship was very well thought out. It was very prestigious. And a lot of people in the industry know about it because it is such a structured, I guess, placement for like learning about the industry a little bit more and like They have a lot of classes within doing actual hands-on work. So it was something that I really wanted at the time. And it was a very strenuous interview process for a college student. Mm -hmm. I went through about three rounds of interviews. um, And then the final round was the company flew us out and we had to present a project that spent like a week or so preparing. And... Ultimately, I ended up getting the internship and going and experiencing life in a different state for 10 weeks and being placed into a team in that corporate environment and really working hands on with what I would be doing if I was offered a full time role. And 
I think that's kind of how I transitioned from my college experience to adulthood and having my first big girl job. Oh, yeah. Yeah. So it sounds like, you know, and it sounds like it's a good place to start. Like if you don't know exactly what you want to do, then start with something that you know you enjoy. Um, exactly. And and it, and it worked out. Did you feel like whenever you were going through that process of college and then the internship, did it all fit in the way that you thought it would in that this is a career, I still enjoy doing this, this is you know, kind of a picture that I have for my life Um, and going into the internship, like this is, I could see myself doing this for a while. Truthfully speaking, I, after my internship, I had my doubts, which now looking back as like a 25 year old, I wish I had listened to those doubts a little bit more. And I thought that it was just something that everybody had to do to kind of get their foot into the door. I don't regret it at all because, you know, the experience that I gained, not just about the role itself, but just how to function as an adult coming into working your first job is experience that I will value forever. So the you talked about how you started having doubts whenever you got into your internship what were some of those doubts that you started having? Truthfully, I was having doubts about working in a corporate environment. I think I wasn't aware of startups at the time. And I think that being in a corporate environment was something that I wasn't familiar with. And so I thought that unfamiliarity was what stirred these doubts in my mind. And so despite the doubts, I still wanted to push through and see if that was something that I could get used to and just be in this corporate environment and work and be happy. Um, And also in terms of the role itself, I realized that there are some responsibilities and just the role itself, it didn't really align with my personality type because what I did was I was a product development coordinator slash production coordinator. That was my first role. And so it was a lot of working with vendors and to get our products in to make sure, you know, the styles we're asking them to produce and the way we're asking them to produce was being produced right. Um, So it was a lot of following up, a lot of cross-functional work and a lot of pushing vendors to make sure, you know, you're getting what you want and you're getting in on, getting things in on time. And I've always been the type of person who has really enjoyed more autonomous work. And I'm not great at pushing people to do their job. So <laughs> that was one of the biggest things that I've learned throughout my life is that it just wasn't a great personality fit mm-hmm. for the role. Okay. Whenever you say the like working in a corporate environment, was that being in the fashion world and the the culture there or was it just corporate work in general? There were a lot of aspects that played into it. Definitely being in the fashion world and playing into like office politics and all that stuff and being in a cubicle for eight hours a day. I think that was just a mix of everything that kind of led me to have this distaste for it. <laughs> but yeah. it was a, a mix of a lot of things. Yeah. And that's a that's a growing, that's a trend now of being in an office nine to five, being in a cubicle. Um, it's like people really hate it. And honestly, I think they've I think we've hated it for a very long time, but there was never right. another option. Like that was a job. That's how you did it. And now right. that there's been more options of doing remote work or just different kinds of jobs being created now, there's all of these other Um, What about, so you talked about like office politics and, and, you know, being in fashion, what were, what were some of the challenges that, that you faced there that you started thinking like, this really is not what I want to do? So. 
it kind of leads into my next role. So my next role, I ended up switching companies and I switched over to a different company because I was wanting a change. I had just moved over and out to Los Angeles and I wanted to kind of see what working in an office full time was like because I guess for the framework of my career is my internship was in office five days a week and then COVID hit. So that's when I started full time at the first company and we worked remote the whole year. So that was something that kept me there for a while was because I had that flexibility. But then I started to question myself and think, you know, would I be happier in an office where I can meet people and see people every day? So then I switched over to another company that was based in LA and it was a role that was in office four days a week. And I think that's where I really learned that being in office is not for me (laughs) because that's where, you know, a lot of the office politics started coming into play and just especially in fashion too. I have a lot of friends in fashion who work in luxury and it's just, they say it's a very cutthroat environment. And I wasn't working in luxury fashion, but I was working more in like fast retail fashion um, for a very big and popular athleisure brand. And it was just very, you know, you had to be on at all times, like smile on your face, you know, just, it felt like, you always had to be putting this mask on to go into work every day. And then you'd come back home and you'd have to take that mask off and just feel extremely exhausted and drained. Mm. Um, And on top of that, you have to get your work done. So it, it was just a lot for me. And I'm sure a lot of people out there can relate to this as well. It's just, you know, you want, you spend a lot of time working, you spend a lot of time with your coworkers. And so you want it to be an environment where you enjoy and you can be yourself and can feel relaxed. And that just wasn't how I felt in that environment. Yeah. Did you feel like, um, was there a part of you that was like, man, this, I feel like this would be a dream job for a lot of people to be able to work in fashion and work for some of these large retailers that you worked for and working with vendors and doing all that. Did you feel like, man, I thought this would be different or I thought I would enjoy it more. Um, was there an element uh, an element of that in the experience? Oh, yeah. That was probably the biggest thing holding me back was that, yeah, this was my dream job for a while with a dream company that I wanted to work for. And so when I got the job, I was extremely grateful. And I was thinking, you know, there would be so many people who would die to be in my position. But why am I so unhappy? And I think that's was the hardest part was, you know, just when I decided to eventually quit was that, something that was so great ended up just being a bunch of smoke and mirrors. And I think, you know, for any industry, that's the same, especially, you know, if you're working with like consumer goods, um, you, you know, brands have a branding is important. And like when you have an established brand that has a lot of, I guess you could say clout or like popularity, it has this sort of connotation with it um, that, Maybe when you get behind the scenes, it really isn't all that. It isn't all that it's wrapped up to be, I guess. Yeah. I I find that to be a common theme, you know, like in a previous episode, I interviewed Rob Henderson, one of our writers here, and he had what he calls a glamour job, which I think is such a good name for it. It's like these jobs that everyone would love to have. And I've had jobs like that in media where, um, you know, when I would tell people what I do, they were like, oh man, that's so cool. I would love to be able to do that. And what is that like whenever you get to do this and this? And it's like, it's fun, but it's not, (laughs) it's not what you think. Um, Uh Especially a lot of the glamour jobs that I've had and that Rob were talking about, they don't pay very well either. So that's a whole other element, but that's a common theme is that those dream jobs are not always what they're cracked up to be. So it sounds like that was kind of the same experience for you. Yes. So then um, you're in this situation and you're like, I'm just not happy here. What do you like? What's your next step? You talked about how you decided to quit. What went into that decision? How How did you make that choice? So I made that choice because I one day I walked into the office and I sat down at my desk and I thought to myself, is this going to be the rest of my life? And I think that 
situation and that that day I just had this epiphany that I just needed a change because I was very unhappy and I could not, you know, go another day doing this. Oh, yes. So I thought about it long and hard. Um, and I realized that for myself, at least, I do things the best when I have no other option and I can put 100% of my effort into finding what's best for me. And so I ended up quitting without a backup plan, Wow. which by the way, is probably not the smartest thing to do <laughs> for people listening out there. Maybe find another job before that. But <laughs> I was like, you know what? I'm still young and I'm very fortunate to be at a place where I can do this. So I ended up quitting to find myself, which is so corny. And I think that's <laughs> what I told people when I was leaving And there was um, a coworker that I work with and she was a mom in her like, I think 40s. And she was like, man, I wish I could quit to find myself. And, you know, it's just like, I, it it sounds corny, but like I was in a, I'm really blessed and I'm really fortunate to have been in a position where I could do that. And I'm grateful for the outcome. So, yeah. Well, and it sounds like, I mean, you know, going to find yourself, like it sounds corny, but I think like really for you, it was more finding out what you wanted your career to be because you had tried something and you were like, I actually don't want to do this. So let me find what is my next career going to be, which I think probably a lot of people will go through. Um, so then going, going to like the practical side of it. So you, you quit, you didn't have a job lined up. Um, how long were you unemployed and how did you make that work in a, in a practical sense in terms of finances? So I had saved up a good amount of money from my last job and I was unemployed for, I think I wanted to be unemployed for three months, but it ended up being seven months, I think. Wow. Um, and Again, I'm really fortunate. I have a really great support system with my family and they truthfully like did help me financially through that time as well. Mm -hmm. Um, Even despite having a lot of money saved up, I think I eventually drained all my savings. But I also was doing some freelance work on the side, um, which would give me like a little bit of cash here and there. Um, And that was a lot of marketing work. So doing like UGC videos and I was at the time posting a lot on my own personal TikTok. And so there would be times where brands would reach out to pay for like a sponsored post. Um, So yeah, it was a lot of freelance work plus support for my family, which I'm very, very grateful for. And just having that lump sum of money saved up. So if you're if you want to quit your job, make sure you save up a lot of money. Yeah. How did you um how did you get the the freelance work? How did you like find those jobs or how did they come to you? A lot was through Upwork and then also just my own personal network of people that I knew in the LA area. Okay, okay, upwork.com. Yeah, that's a good that's a good site for getting freelance work. So, um so you're unemployed for 7 months. Financially, you found a way to make it work, but you know you have to find the next step. So, did you like when you quit? Did you know that you wanted to get out of fashion, or were you quitting just that particular job? So at first, I thought it was just the company, and so I was still interviewing for roles within fashion and the same roles that I was doing previously. Okay, and I think ultimately it was because I doubted myself and didn't think that I could make a career change. And so I thought, because I have experience in this, I can definitely, you know, land another job within fashion, doing the same thing that I was doing. And maybe it was the company that I wasn't happy about. Mm -hmm. And so I was interviewing for a lot of the same roles. And every time I would get into an interview for the same position that I was doing, it seemed like everybody who interviewed me wasn't very happy and I could see that and I could see that they were you know overworked very stressed and I would think to myself like is this really something that was it really the company or was it really the job in itself and 
that's kind of where I slowly started to realize maybe this isn't just a company thing that made me unhappy, but it was more of like, this maybe isn't the right industry and field and role for me. Yeah. And there was just a lot of random instances um, where it just felt like it wasn't in my cards and it wasn't the path I was supposed to be on because there was a lot of signs that were getting thrown at me that were showing me like, okay, you know, it's maybe time for you to move on to a completely different role and just try it out and see what happens. Okay. Was there like a a final moment where you were like, okay, I need to, I need to make a full career change here? Yes. It was actually during an interview for a position. Um, I was interviewing with the hiring manager and it was for a fashion role. And she told me that you have to really love this in order to put up with all this shit. <laughs> and that's when I realized, you know, I really don't love it as much <laughs> to put up with all this. So maybe it's time for a change. <laughs> yeah, that makes sense. So then, all right. So you come out of that interview and you're like, you know what? I, I need to stop forcing this. Like, how do you how do you then move on from that? And you're like, okay, what career am I going to change to? Did you have any direction, any idea from that point on? I think that the biggest, that instance and also another instance was kind of the, what kids call the canon event. (laughs) (laughs) And the second instance was when I actually got a job offer for a role that I was doing before. So it was a production coordinator position for a really small jewelry brand. And I got a position and it was offered to me last April and that was, I think, month six of being unemployed or like a lot really late into the the game. And I was like so desperate to get a job again. I was so excited. But it was, again, an office five days a week doing what I was doing before, but with jewelry instead of clothing. And three days after I got my acceptance, the offer was rescinded and she decided, the owner, that they didn't have the budget to continue on with hiring for this role. Oh, wow. Okay, man, what was what was that like? Cuz you're like, oh my, cuz 6 months of unemployment is tough and you're like mm-hmm. <sighs> I mean, I can't imagine the like just the drop in your heart. It was crazy because I remember I when I got the offer, I remember so clearly And you can ask my mom this. I remember I was talking to her and I told her, I feel like this is going to get taken away from me. And then that next Monday, I looked at my email and it, it said, you know, this offer has been rescinded and I couldn't believe it. I mean, of course I was in shock, but I almost felt like I had an idea that this wasn't meant for me anymore. Mm-hmm. And I knew that this was going to get taken away. And so, I mean, I was distraught, but I knew in my heart that this wasn't meant for me. And I think that's kind of what pulled me back up again to get back out there and start interviewing for marketing positions. Okay. So then how did that, how did you make that decision? Um, what made you know that that was a logical next step or or next career, I should say? I think because I've always had just a very innate desire to do marketing and do social media and content because as a kid, when I was 15, I started my first YouTube channel and it was just a really random thing. It was like me and my friend, we decided to just like film ourselves on my iPhone and then I like taught myself how to use iMovie and I just put it up on there. And the first video we we did, it was like, it got like 10 views. It was like me and my mom and my grandma and like her watching it like three times. So then, you know, I wasn't really expecting much about it, but I just loved it so much that I was willing to invest my time and my energy to learn the skills on how to edit videos, how to like, you know, do all, do YouTube and like learn, you know, little like, SEO tricks here and there. Yeah. And 
So I knew that this was always something I was interested in. And eventually I took over that YouTube channel and I grew it to about like 19 or 20,000 subscribers. I remember I forced my grandpa to like buy me my first DSLR camera. And I was like, I promise I'm going to blow up on YouTube. I won't forget you whenever I become big. (laughs) Yeah, like I'll pay you back whenever I I make it big. And so I've always loved it. And I've always found interest in creating content. And that's kind of what made me realize I do have the skills, but it isn't in a corporate setting or like a professional setting, but I do have the skills that are required or are necessary for these types of roles. And I have experience, but it's my, my own personal experience. And Mm -hmm. so that's when I started to think like, yeah, this could definitely be a potential for me. And I think you mentioned whenever you were in in college, part of your um, degree work was marketing courses, right? Yes. Yes. I've always been interested in like the psychology aspect of marketing as well and what determines like consumer behavior and how marketing plays into that. So those classes always interested me and I really, really wanted to learn more. So then, um, okay, so you decide, all right, I'm going to give marketing a shot. Was that um, like, because that's kind of risky to start interviewing for jobs that you didn't like you didn't have previous work experience did you feel did you feel confident did you feel uneasy like you know what were you feeling at that point I was feeling so uneasy but I had to portray confidence in order (laughs) to get myself you know to test the waters and to really interview I remember I interviewed for a couple of agencies and I didn't really do well in those interviews, but I knew that those were stepping stones and it was good practice to, you know, get my feet warm. And I knew that I was going to find a role that had the specific requirements that, or the skills that I knew and had under my belt. And so I just kept my eyes peeled and I kept my options open. I kept my opportunities open to Maybe not bigger brands, but, you know, startups and places where it's not this like corporate environment because I realized I didn't enjoy corporate either. And so I just kept my options open. And I think that's the biggest thing when it comes to job searching is, you know, you have the ideal dream job, but, you know, some some jobs will surprise you and there will be opportunities that surprise you and come out of nowhere And so just staying hopeful and staying positive was like the biggest thing that got me through the job search. Okay. What about, um, so like in a practical sense, your resume, how did you, because there was, there would be no work experience on your resume that had like specific marketing um, responsibilities. So how did you write your resume or, or, you know, make it appealing make it fit these roles that were in marketing? So it was really interesting. I originally was just submitting the same resume to every single job, which do not do that, by the way, that is not the way to go. And it was very interesting kind of who I picked up as a mentor along the way, because I posted this video, this really short video on TikTok, just talking about my career journey and my struggles of finding a job. And actually the CEO of Dave's Hot Chicken reached out to me Hmm. and was like, I saw your video, you know, I'd be happy to look over your resume. And I was like, okay. And I sent it over to him and he told me the first thing I should take off is my experience in fashion and take off my degree and just put my put bachelor's of science in marketing which wasn't a complete lie because I did study a lot of, you know, functions Mm -hmm. in marketing, but I also had that textile experience, but that's not something that, you know, your future employer really needs to know or wants to know about. Yeah. Did you, so then like taking off the fashion experience, like what did you have in your, in your work experience section then? I did have So I left one fashion experience, my most recent one on there, but I also put in 
my freelance experience and my personal content creation experience. And so those were some of the work experiences that I had. And I think the biggest thing was, you know, I I wanted to make it into the interview and kind of discuss, you know, my job search journey and kind of what got me to here in the interview. And I think that's where the magic really happened because on paper, it didn't look great. But, you know, when I got into talking about my experience and how a lot of it was just learnt on my own, that's where I think led me to this opportunity of landing this job right now. Mm -hmm. Okay. So then like, yeah, basically just finding whatever experience you had that was relevant, which I guess, so then in that sense, it was good that you had the the freelance work, um, your own work that you had done yourself, um, some of the like the sponsored content that you had done. So just finding any piece of relevant experience is what what helped the most. And then yes. how long did it take to, well, what was the difference between using your original resume to apply for these marketing roles? And then once you actually made those changes to make it more relevant to a marketing role, um, like, were you getting a lot of interviews before? And then when you made the changes, how quickly did you start getting interviews after that? Oh, it was like night and day after I made the changes. It was like, I didn't know about ATS optimization mm -hmm. when I was going through my job search, which now I do. <laughs> and I'm realizing, you know, I might've saved, I might have, I could have saved myself a lot of time by, not just submitting the same resume, but actually optimizing it for the job. Mm -hmm. And that's something I would do over again if I had to go through this process. Yeah. Well, it sounds like you did a lot, like a lot of, you know, tailoring your resume for a job is is sort of like, um, it's something that a lot of people think about, even if they don't know about ATSs and all of that. Um, we still kind of practice that even if we don't exactly know why. So it sounds like you were kind of doing a lot of that already. Um, okay, so then you have your resume, you've now tailored it, you've made it fit this new career that you're going for. What was the interview process like? Did you face any challenges because your background was a lot in fashion? Yeah, I think it was a lot of challenges when it came to just the the jargon and kind of like, picking up on the different things like KPIs, you know, you kind of, you kind of have an understanding of some of these concepts, but you know, it, you don't know the actual terms that apply to it. So it was picking up like the industry jargon and truthfully it was finding a company and people that, you know, see the potential in you and see the value in you and want to invest in you to teach me. And I think the biggest thing when it comes to life in itself is just always having the openness and the willingness to learn and craving that knowledge and asking questions when necessary. And I think, you know, Sydney, you can speak for this, but I, I hope that my passion just came through mm -hmm. because it was really something that I was so passionate about and interested in learning. And, you know, I think that that really shows through in an interview. Yeah. I, well, I also, think that one of the things that showed was just like when you have a knack for something just like natural talent because in any in any job that you're hiring for you're looking for I guess you could call it like hard skills and soft skills but you're looking for the concrete experience like have they done this thing but then you're also looking for like you know, do they have, however you want to phrase it, like, do they have an eye for it? Do they have a knack for it? Do they have a natural talent for it? And there's both sides because you can teach the skills, but there's some things that you just can't teach. And so with you, it was like, yeah, you didn't have like a ton of marketing experience, but you clearly understood a lot of it. You had a natural talent for it and you had shown the ability to learn. So I think like that's what made the difference for me is like all the other stuff like teaching strategy and measuring performance and reporting, like anybody can learn that. Like I was like, she can learn that. But this other stuff, that's stuff that you can't learn. And so that was, that was what I noticed. Um, so then, okay. Other questions about the interview process. Well, I guess going back to 
those challenges. How did you overcome those challenges? Did you have to do something actively in the interviews? Did you make like any changes? Like how, how did you overcome that challenge? I would say the biggest thing I wanted to show in the interview was just my passion for the company, the product, and for the role that I was applying for. And so in the interview with you guys, I remember, you know, I just wanted to show that I was really invested in this and this was my first choice. And I wanted to give you a sample of my work. And so I think, you know, before even you guys asking, I just thought like, what would be the best way for me to show that I can be a good fit for this role and I can do what's asked and I can, you know, provide value to the company. And I think I sent over like a little sample of what I could do for you guys. Um, And I think that was something that, you know, if you really, really want this, you got to take that extra step to lock it down and show Mm -hmm. that you can, you want to do the extra steps to get that role in that position. Yeah. And I will say that made a huge difference because, and I think that is probably more true if you are making a career change and so you don't have a lot of the work history to rely on. Um, If you don't have the past work, then what can you do in the present to show Mm -hmm. that you are capable of doing this job? And so That was so, you know, like the role you have now is you're um, you do social media. So you you created social media posts to show this is what I would do for job scan. And so that was a great way to show like, okay, so past experience, like not a ton, but she's clearly demonstrated that she understands what the work is, what the role is, and she's able to do it. So I think that made a huge difference and probably more so in making a a career change. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, so then um, looking back through the whole process of making a career change, what were some of the big lessons that you learned along the way in how to successfully make a, a career change? I would say the biggest lessons are don't settle. Don't settle for less than you deserve and less than you want because there's a role out there that will be the perfect fit for you. And don't underestimate yourself because you have a lot more capability and skills and knowledge than you think that you do. So I would say those are two of the biggest life lessons and things that I learned from my job search journey. Yeah, I love especially that that second one. Um, we I a um, little while ago wrote a guide on on how to make a career change. It's on the job scan blog, and I interviewed um, a career coach, and she talked about kind of that exact thing of like when you're thinking about the skills or experience to list on your resume, you might be surprised what you come up with. Like if you just um, like the example she was talking about is if you're a teacher and you want to transfer to to something else. You might think like, oh, well, I have experience with, you know, writing like curriculum plans or, you know, teaching in front of a class. And you might not think that's a transferable skill, but when you really think about it, that's like you have experience with public speaking and you have experience with creating a a strategy or in a sense, managing a team because you have a, a classroom. So it's like, don't, don't just don't, like you said, don't doubt yourself and think like, oh, I've only done this specific thing. Think about like, what are the skills, like all of the skills that were involved in doing that? And you might be surprised with what you are capable of doing. So I, I like that. I like that point. Yeah. yeah, It's a lot of just reframing your experience and reframing your mindset to, you know, see a different picture of yourself. And I think yeah, just like you said, it really is just, you know, how can you play these transferable skills to your favor and, you know, show that you can take what you learned and apply it into a different industry? Um, well, Priscilla, this was this was really great. I think a lot of good good nuggets on, you know, kind of not just the the practical side of making a career change, but also the the emotional side of it and things that that you went through and how you overcame those challenges. 
Um, so I'm really glad to have you now here at JobScan. If y'all follow us on social media, you'll see Priscilla and you'll see her charming and charismatic personality, which is the reason why we hired her. So definitely follow us on LinkedIn and Instagram. She posts videos there too, and also on YouTube. So thank you, Priscilla, for, uh, for sharing your experience with us. Yes. Thank you for having me. And for sure, give us a follow because then you'll help me keep my job. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Nice. I love it. Thank you.